But guys, I think at this point, it is pretty confirmed that your girl Bai and your boy Mark are not going to be coming to Global. So let's talk a little bit about that uh, in today's video. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. Today, we're going to be talking about the dev report from Tower of Fantasy. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting one because I want to focus a lot on the lack of the collab units. So we do see in, uh, in this paragraph over here, the global version may not be able to provide these characters due to copyright barriers which is the most obvious answer I guess and so yeah today I really wanted to focus on this one and how exactly we should cope what the meta is going to look like but before that let's talk a little bit about the dev notes themselves because it's not overly often we actually get these and depending on how your experience with Tower of Fantasy has been so far some of you might be like man I don't care about these dev notes it's just all talk or some of you are gonna be like oh wow uh, I, I do have faith in the devs for me I'm kind of in between. And so the first point they talk about is about the events. We will keep on working on new interesting events. However, the frequency is a little bit stressful. So they are saying that they think that Wanderers, like us players, are getting a little bit stressed from the overwhelming amount of events. I, <laughs> I actually don't think so. I completely disagree with that. I personally think the pace at which we've been getting the events is completely fine, especially with the updates. We've got 1.5. We had the orienteering event and then we're soon to be having like the Vera orienteering, which actually, wait, no, we're in it right now. But to work towards catching up to the CN version, I think this is a good thing. It just means that we're going to be accelerated really, really hardcore. But the Dark Crystals, hopefully, I hope they are going to somehow compensate for that. So for the next point, they are quite aware of everyone talking about the collaboration characters by and Mark. And unfortunately, the global version are not going to be able to get them, which is very understandable. It was the most obvious reason. However, what is interesting is that we may work on other collaboration events. Uh, I think we just need to take this one with like a grain of salt because they do have the for Mark and Bai done. I know that there are a lot of players who are looking for the recycling of Bai and Mark's kits into potentially new characters or new collab characters, etc, etc. I would not bank on that. I would not actually plan for that kind of outcome in the future. For the second last point, we have game experience adjustment and optimization being a long-term task. And what they've alluded to here is the respawn time of the new world boss on Artificial Island. So I think what they are referring to for this one is the respawn time of seven days currently for those big boss monsters in your personal artificial island as well as the three days for normal mobs and elites i think what's going to happen here is that with possibly the 2.0 update we're going to see them go on to like a oh, monday reset all of the bosses are going to reset all of the mobs are also going to reset kind of thing this is something i do actually have a little bit more faith in Hotter with because there were a lot of people complaining about the crow bug, right? The the drilling, the 20k damage, the jetpack crow, right? And the funny thing is, is that they did not bother to fix this for as long as CN has gone live. However, with all of these people complaining about it on global, and I know there are a lot of you who do love it. I actually loved it as well. It was really, really fun. That was one of the things that they actually did fix and then push out into a China patch. On the other hand, they're also really balancing all of our upcoming characters, such as the Frig, such as the Nemesis, such as the Claudia, and potentially Ruby, Lin, and everybody else that is going to come after. Somehow, Hotter thought that it would be a good idea to give Cobalt B a whole bunch of shadow, which isn't reflected over here. I do think that they are listening. They are taking into consideration a global meta. Now, moving on to the last one, it's that we are getting more CS team, a bigger CS team, which is really, really good. Uh, CS being a customer service. Now, with all of that out of the way, I want to start talking about the collab units and how we're not getting them and how exactly we should cope as the global server. So starting off with Mark, Mark is a little bit easier to not have. His weapon, Dawn, actually was really freaking good it did really good damage it did great shattering great charging and it essentially made you unkillable now all of these things are actually quite replaceable considering for the physical element we do have the claudia we do have the shido especially for the shattering on the charge side i would say that claudia is more than sufficient and so mark like whilst he is a real beast it's not like we can't really replace what he was bringing to the team. However, on the other hand, we have the buy, which is not coming. This is going to be big sad because she is going to be essentially the only shatterer for Vault team that 
you know, doesn't come along. And even when your boy Tianlong comes along, his shadow is actually, it's, it's okay. It's at an eight, it's at an A, but his multipliers are crazy. And so he is shattering like crazy as well. But he is so incredibly far away that we can't even really consider this guy. And on top of that, Bai is also an extremely good DPS. However, let's start talking about replacements. Let's start talking about how exactly we should cope with the lack of the Alaya weapon. And so with the exclusion of Bai, I think that theoretically speaking, there is only one thing that really happens to the Vault team, and it's that it has less DPS, and that's it. And the reason that I would say that is because you can actually supplement it, depending on the scenarios that we'll talk about very, very soon. You could supplement your Vault team with a Shield Breaker, and you would still be able to get the job done, right? So this Samir Nemesis Huma, or if you go into like the Crow Nemesis Huma, this team is a Vault team, and this will help you clear the Vault types of content. It's very much like how at the start of the game, we had a team, Samir, Nemesis, and King. This was the team that was like everyone was using to push for Bygone. It's the same philosophy. We can play with this. This is your Vault team. We don't have to have the buy. However, again, two scenarios really. The first scenario is what I would call your unrestricted game modes. So I'm talking about things like your Bygone Phantasm, where in the Bygone Phantasm mode, because there is a sequential one, this one, there is no really any, oh, you can't use flame weapons or you can't use the physical weapons, etc, etc. That also applies to some things like your raids, sometimes your frontier clash. I think like blocking one element is like, you still have three choices actually, so it's not too bad. Or sometimes with your void rifts, uh, I know it has frost immunity today, but like another day it might have like nothing like that. And so it's in these scenarios where I think it's actually completely okay. These scenarios are completely unaffected by the lack of buy coming to global. And the reason I say that is exactly because of teams like this, Samir Nemesis King, Samir Nemesis uh, Huma instead, and they will actually deal quite a fair bit of damage. It could be Shido as well. All you needed was a shield breaker. It doesn't strictly have to be the vault element because they will still do damage. And so in this case, I would take the best Shatterer with the best damage. And generally speaking, that's probably gonna be King, but I'm gonna say Huma C1 especially, it's gonna be a pretty close competitor. And so yeah, this is your Vault team. I know it's not completely Vault, but it is still going to perform relatively well. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about the restricted content which is when you know you are locked into a particular element. So this guy, as you can see, he does have a physical shield, right? And so what that means is that no matter what physical things I do, he is barely getting shield broken. Remember that Claudia's shield breaking capability, I believe is at a, maybe a six or an eight, I can't remember, but it's relatively low. Yeah, it's a bloody 7.5, right? And so theoretically speaking, it shouldn't be too bad. However, as you can see, that actually is, you know, it's not really shield breaking too much. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to Nemesis, who has a shield break of Shatter 6. I mean, yeah, 6 actually. And look at her, she is actually shattering faster than that Claudia is because of the elemental difference. And so what that means is that the only thing that it really changes in restricted content the element restrictions is that you don't use the same element against the type of shield, right? So for that physical shield, you don't use a physical element weapon such as your Claudia over here. However, sometimes it is a little bit tough, right? So for example, we've got this, I think this is a Frontier Clash normal. We see that the enemy has a purple shield. These elemental shields block the efficacy of the particular color, right? So in this case, Vault weapons would be having a harder time to shatter this. What that means is that you use another color. You use like your Claudia from before, you use Shiro, you use Meryl, you use King, you use Huma. And so the mildly restricted content like this is completely okay. We have three other choices. Now, the problem, the problem that I see, it's actually in content such as this, the sequential phantasm where you are restricted to only using fire weapons or you're restricted to only using the physical and vault. Okay, that's actually pretty good since you have two choices, but only frost over here. Now, in these cases, I would say that, uh, for example, let's take this one, for example, and say that this was only vault. I think that the best thing to do here is to take your Vault team, which is gonna be your Samir slash Crow plus Nemesis, or maybe Samir and Crow because you don't have a Nemesis. And for the third option, there is an optimal choice. And that optimal choice is going to be your Shatterer who shatters the best. And in most cases, it's gonna be your Huma. In burst cases, it could be your Shiro. But generally speaking, from a sustained Shatter point of view, I think Huma is gonna be the best Shatterer. Now, why exactly should we take Huma in this kind of most restricted situation? It's because she doesn't do damage. It's because none of them do damage. And so the only role that they have in content such as that is to Shatter. So take the best Shatterer you got, don't care about the damage, 
and this is your vault team. Now, to be honest, there is not very much content that is giga locked into an element like that one over there. Most of the time you have at least two choices, even three. And so, yeah, all I'm saying is that we can cope. We can cope with the lack of buy. Uh, for example, let me take the ice team and say we only had like, uh, we only had Freak and Tsubasa. There is no shield breaker there. I just add in a Shiro and it's gonna work. Or I add in a Huma and it's gonna work. This is actually completely, completely viable. We just need to make do with what we have until we get there, right? If you only have these two characters and you don't have Meryl, then this is going to be the team that you're going to be running. Same goes for the Vault team. That's going to be the team that you're going to be running and it's okay. And when exactly is the Vault team going to be, you know, have a best in slot? Because like I said before, the Vault team, theoretically speaking, is going to be underperforming compared to the rest of them. I think it's going to be when Lin comes in because of her pretty good capabilities in shattering. And honestly, if I was to estimate as to when Lin was coming, I would say probably in about a month and a half's time which is not bad, it's not bad at all. However, what this does mean is that until we do get the Lin, I think that the Vault team is gonna be the underdog because we're probably gonna be getting Saki before we get Lin, we're probably gonna be getting Ruby before we're getting Lin, so Flame and Frost are gonna be pretty competitive. Vault may be coming a little bit later. Honestly, at this point, I'm feeling like Physical is lacking a main DPS. You know, like Shiro is really good, Claudia is really good, but like none of them are really main DPS material like Lyra is, and she is even further away than Lin is. And so yeah, my guys, I just want to really, really reiterate, there is no such thing as maining a team. You can't main Vault because of all of these different restricted contents, right? You need to have at least two, and so it's okay. It's okay to just simply have have two of the element characters plus a shield breaker. If one of those characters is a shield breaker, then it's even easier, right? So for example, maybe your fire team is your king and your huma. You could actually take your Tsubasa for number three. You could take your C1 Claudia for number three. And that is your fire team. That is completely okay. It doesn't matter that Claudia is of another element. She is still contributing to it. It's just that the ceiling, you're a little bit lower than where the ceiling is. And you know, who is going to be at the ceiling? It's realistically only going to be the whales. All right, and so I think that's honestly enough for now. I do want to pass off the question to you guys. Like for me personally, I'm using Samir, Nemesis, and King. This is my preferred vault team. I want to know what you guys are using. Are you using your King? Are you using a Huma over here? Are you using a Shiro? Or are you just like coping and you're running something like this with no shield breaker, which is honestly pretty crazy. <laughs> but guys, let me know down in the comments below. However, if this video was kind of helpful or you found it mildly entertaining, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, turning on that notification bell. And unfortunately, as by the simulacrum that is not coming to global server, once said, all good things must come to an end, or <laughs> it never really happened to begin with. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.